rugged, weatherproof, and made in the USA right here in Texas. Today we're gonna take a look at the new Recon 40 from REZ Antennas, this time on Ham Radio Tube. We got a first look at the Recon 40 at Dayton Hamvention, uh, and Mike was kind enough to loan me this coil for review, and I gotta tell you, I've been using it a couple times now, and I freaking like it. So let's hop over on the table, and I'm gonna show you all the features and benefits of this thing. So taking a look at the Ranger 40, this thing is very, very high quality. I think REZ antennas probably makes, not probably, definitely makes the highest quality loaded coil antennas that I have ever used, and I've used a lot of them. The body itself is a CNC machined Delrin body. The coil itself, instead of using stainless steel, he opted for 14 gauge magnet wire, which is gonna give you a ridiculously wide bandwidth, and I'll show you that in a little bit. The bottom features a 3 8 24 thread that's gonna screw into, you can screw it into a mirror mount, a spike mount. Uh, I'm gonna show you the tripod that he sent along. Screwed into this 3 8 24 thread, is this radial puck here. Now this is all stainless steel hardware and CNC machine Delrin. And this radial puck is really awesome. You've got eight holes in here to stick a banana plug in with your radial wire. So you got no problems putting out as many radials as you need. Here in where I am in Huntsville State Park, the ground here is just sand. So I need a lot of radials to get a good tune on this. And having this many holes in here is what makes that possible. I'm gonna show you the SWR and the bandwidth of what we get on this thing in a minute. The SO239 connector is sealed uh, with a gasket. So totally, this whole antenna is totally weatherproof. Uh, you do need to weatherproof your coax if you're going to leave this outside permanently, uh, or if it's raining outside, you might want to do that. But other than that, there's gaskets on the top here. There's gaskets inside the coil as well. So he's done a lot of great work making sure that there's no water ingress in this antenna. As far as power handling, this thing is a beast. 500 watts on single sideband, 200 watts on digital with a 50% duty cycle. But the thing that really makes this coil shine is just how easy it is to use. You've got this little switch up here, and this switch is what's either going to add the coil or take the coil out. So on 40 meters, you turn the coil on, you extend your 17 foot whip all the way up, and you're now resonant on 40 meters. When you wanna use the higher frequencies, you simply disengage the coil, and then you will just shorten the whip of the antenna to get resonant on all of the other bands, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. And it is stupid easy and stupid wide bandwidth. Mike also sent along his tripod, and we've got these three legs here. They're actually quite thick, I would guess close to a half inch thick here. And then you have the tripod base where you've got your uh, 3 8 24 thread, and then you've got the three holes for the legs. And then you have this little ring here, so if it's windy out, you can actually take a stake or a weight or something and put it on the tripod base and keep it weighted down so it doesn't fall over in the wind. And all you gotta do is screw the legs into the tripod base, just like that. And then we take our 3 8 24 thread from the antenna, or from the coil rather, screw that on, and then we add our whip. But let me talk to you about this 17 foot whip that he sent along. And it looks like this. This is a really high quality whip. One of the big things that stands out to me is the base here. This is a machined base with a 3 8 24 thread on here. Now, why is that important? Well, a lot of the other whips on the market, the 17-foot whips, and, and really a lot of the telescopic whips, whips, they're just crimped on here. This is machined with the uh, antenna slid in there and secured somehow, I'm not sure how, but it's a heck of a lot more durable than just having a crimp. The very top section of this antenna has a nice little ball on here that's inserted inside. This is the first section. It's nice and thick. This is a rigid whip. You can just tell by feeling it, it's higher quality than a lot of the other whips on the market. And then they're all crimped uh, with a single crimp here. But I've been playing with this a lot 
and I've not had any issues extending it. I, I'm not worried about uh, it breaking. It's got nice friction to it. I'm not worried about it collapsing. It's just a nice high quality antenna or whip rather. Now you certainly don't have to buy the REZ antennas whip. You can use any 17 foot whip that you have. So you, it, he sells this all a la carte. You can buy the coil, you can buy the whip, you can buy the tripod, you can buy the radial hub uh, all separately. So if you have some of these parts already, you might just need the coil. So that's nice. You can get it at rezantennas.com. You can also get them at DX Engineering. So uh, no matter where you are, you can probably get one of these antennas. Now deploying and tuning the Recon 40 couldn't be any easier. You're simply gonna screw on the whip, attach your radials, and extend the whip all the way up for 40 meters. Then all you have to do is make sure that the 40 meter coil is engaged and you are on the air. When you wanna to go to higher frequencies, you simply disengage the coil by flipping the switch and all you have to do is shorten the whip. I found on 20 meters by shortening this first section all the way down and then about six more inches down, I'm resident on 20 just like that. And bandwidth on this thing is phenomenal. We're gonna show you that in just a second. Keep in mind your soil conditions of where you're going though. I'm using five 33 foot radials and two bunches of two 16 and a half foot radials to get the SWR that I'm getting because I'm just on sand. There is no soil conductivity here at all. It's, it's terrible. That's not a fault of the antenna. Uh, that is strictly because of the soil conductivity. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna go out to somewhere new, bring more radials than you think you're gonna need because you just might need them. And guys, I gotta tell you, after using this thing a few times, it's just stupid easy to use. When you have a 17 foot radial, you're gonna be resonant 20 through 10 just by shortening the whip. The, the thing that makes the difference is the ease for when you wanna get on 40 meters. Being able to flip that switch without having to slide a coil up and down takes all the guesswork out. You literally get up from your bench, you flip the switch, and you're on 40, you're on 20, whatever. It's just so convenient and you don't have to make jumpers where you go from the base to the whip to bypass the coil. It just works with the flip of a switch. So now let's hop over to the table. I'm gonna show you on the 7300 just how incredibly wide the bandwidth is on this antenna and how incredibly low of SWR I'm getting with this. So let's check it out. So here's a look at 40 meters. We've got the whip fully extended. I got 69% power and we're at CW on the bottom of the band. You can see we're about 1.6, 1.7 to one. So I probably could use uh, a couple extra radials, but I'm using everything I got. But check this out. As we go up the band, we're gonna get lower in SWR. And this is actually really wide banded. And up towards the top of the band, here we're coming up on the middle of the band, all the way up to the top of 40 meters. Now we're almost perfect SWR. Look at how wide banded this is. That's kind of a testament to the quality of this antenna right there. Now this isn't actually made for 30 meters, but I did kind of find a workaround. We still have the 40 meter tap turned on and I shortened the whip considerably. I shortened it by like five sections and then the sixth section, section I shortened uh, about an inch and we're just under 3.1 to one, uh, but we can tune it. So if you wanna get, there we are. I mean, no SWR now when it's tuned. So you can uh, actually use this on 30. Now here's 20 meters, starting about 1.2-ish down at the bottom, all the way to the top. Just gets better. Look at that. There's 17 meters, 1.1-ish, 1 1.2, all the way across the band. Very, very good SWR there. Take a look at 15 meters. This is a big band where no SWR at the bottom, all the way up. Look at how wide banded this thing is. Towards the top, we got like just a little blip there. Amazing. There's 12 meters, about 1.3 to one across the whole band. Couldn't get it any lower than that, but that's very, very doable for sure. Now check out 10 meters. I tuned this at 28.3 megahertz. At the bottom were 1.4-ish. 
Look at how wide banded this is. We're gonna go all the way up. Look at that. I've not seen an antenna that's this wide band on 10 meters. All the way up into the FM portion. The entire 10 meter band. That is absolutely freaking insane. So what are my final thoughts? Well, clearly we saw amazing bandwidth and great SWR across every single band that this antenna is made for, including one that it's not made for. So getting that 30 meters is pretty fun. Now, there is a caveat that does come at a cost. Again, this is a very high quality, high end antenna. The coil itself is gonna run you $299 and you can also purchase uh, a la carte the tripod, and the whip if you need them. But if you already have a tripod, you already have a 17 foot whip, all you need to do is get the coil. Something like this is really, really awesome to use. Uh, the past few times I've been using it, it's just stupid easy to flip this switch, engage 40 meters, have the whip all the way up, and get on the air. When you wanna get on the higher frequencies, you just flip the switch, shorten the whip, done and done. It is by far the easiest loaded coil antenna I have ever used. There's no more raising and lowering the coil. It's all in here, it's all done, life is good. So uh, the, only, the only thing I noticed that I won't say is a negative, it's just something that I thought of. Maybe on a Gen 2 this can be changed, but this toggle switch is kind of my only bugaboo. It's sticking out. It is a tinier toggle switch. So there could be the potential, and I'm just speculating, the potential that this gets caught or snagged on something in your rucksack or rocking around in the car, however, whatever you're doing to transport it, this might could get damaged. It would be cool to see instead of a toggle switch, maybe a more flat rocker type switch that would fit a bit more flush against the radius of the coil. It's already ground out flat there. So it might be cool to just see a rocker switch instead of a toggle switch there, but that's really the only kind of critique I have on this thing. It is incredibly durable, incredibly well made. This is something you're gonna buy once and you're never gonna need to buy another loaded coil antenna because this is gonna last your entire lifetime and probably your kid's entire lifetime as well. So I got nothing but good things to say about it. If you wanna pick one of these up, I'll leave links to rezantenna.com and DX Engineering in the comments. In the meantime, thanks for watching. My name is Mike, this is Ham Radio Tube 73.